All right, guys. Well, we're going to try something really new today. I think I'm going to give it about 30 minutes of trial and error here. And if this recording works out the way that I genuinely hope that it does, uh, then, you know, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this because what I wanted to do for a long time now is expand your ability to interact and engage with this podcast and with me if you enjoy my videos or if you know me or, you know, for friends or family, you don't get to see me so often. Uh, I think this is a much more personal way to be able to um, engage, like to be entertained by this podcast, unless you think my face is absolutely disgusting, in which case I will absolutely understand. <laughs> what I want to do is have, uh, like I've talked about for a long time, if you're a long time listener of the show, uh, is to have a video option of this uh, podcast that can be uploaded to YouTube. Um, if, you know, if something funny happens, if it happens, then, you know, we would have the opportunity to have relatively clear footage. This is just a, a more or less expensive webcam. I'm just checking. When I look here, I'm just checking out myself on the monitor here. Um, this isn't the worst angle. Um, I don't know if this is like the perfect, perfect, perfect angle, but I got to say, I am surprisingly not as, I'm not really disappointed with this webcam. I don't have the money for a, uh, you know, like a proper brand new DSLR. I, I have a Canon that I've talked about a few times, but setting up this damn thing has just been such a speed bump in my progress. And um, this webcam, webcam or not, is pretty clear. So what I'm going to try and do is a very simple short episode today. And hopefully, uh, another reason also before I get uh, through this intro, another reason why I wanted to do this is... Um, if this process works with this new uh, program, this new software that I'm using, then uh, we have a lot of options. One, like I've said, uh, you have a new way to engage with this content. You can, you know, while you're cleaning the house or bathing your dog or doing yoga or something at home, you not only can just listen to the podcast if you're already doing that, but you can just throw this on your TV, on uh, YouTube, for example, uh, or on your phone, and you can also see me talking to you, which I think is a bit more personal, a bit more fun. I do that with a lot of podcasts that I enjoy that include video options, so I feel like if I enjoy that, there's probably people that who listen to this podcast that also would enjoy that. It's just an idea. Uh, two, like I've said, also uh, cutting up the content, hopefully driving new people to this uh, podcast through mediums like TikTok or Instagram or whatever. And uh, the third reason, which I swear, once I started that sentence, I had it in my mind. Oh, the third reason why I wanted to uh, start this is also because if this program works the way that I hope that it does, it is simultaneously recording this decent, decent video with the clean audio. So if this works, this could potentially mean no more of me sitting alone uh, taking the footage from my TikTok lives or from, you know, from something I've shot on my iPhone and like separately mixing my separate audio file in like a program together because that takes a lot of time and it's exhausting. And yeah, basically if this works, then that's just two jobs bink, in one video and it could sound really cool, could sound good, could be, could be nice. Um, so I thought I would do a very simple thing today uh, to get us started. I have a list here of German cliches and I had a video that came out this week about uh, where I covered the first five of this list. And I did it in character as my um, as my German guy, Johannes, which I thought was pretty funny. I, you know, uh, as of this recording, I don't know how poorly or well it has done. But I think if I'm going to do a little test recording for you guys, it might make more sense. Because if you've come to the recording from the videos that you might want to see something fresh, something you haven't seen. So I might, uh, in the video that I did, I did the first five. So I might, for this recording, start at number six. I think that makes more sense. Also, just before I jump right in, something I wanted to talk about. Big news coming in. Big news, and then we're going to go through some stereotypes. Our good friend and passionate, regular follower, friend, and family member of this podcast, Moritz Binder. Um whom I've talked about many, many times on this, has written a feature film that I had the enormous pleasure, uh, enormous pleasure last February, February 2023, uh, had the great pleasure of working on with one of my all-time favorite actors, Peter Sarsgaard, one of the most amazing rising Hollywood stars 
getting a big break on Orange is the New Black. And of course, last year's Oscar indie darling, Past Lives, the, um, the incredible John McGarrow. A, an 80s like breakout wonderful star who just is the chattiest sweetest the crispiest man the, the voice on this guy ben chaplin i get the thin red line and the thin blue line mixed up one of them is the errol morris documentary and the other one is the uh the war the other war uh movie forgive me moritz <laughs> uh ben chaplin and uh yeah uh Ger one of germany's biggest uh rising female actresses uh Actors Leonie Benish. Uh, this film, September 5, about the, uh, you know, groundbreaking, world changing uh, terrorist attack back in Munich in uh, at the Olympics in 72, September 5th, 72. The film is a wonderful thriller, uh, you know, a, a political, uh, passionate, emotional. It's very exciting. It's, you're very, you're very engrossed and gripped by the, but it's probably like a political drama. Probably political drama is like the most accurate way you could call it, but it feels some parts of it are incredibly like heart pounding. Um, and it covers, you know, the American sports journalist team from ABC who flew to Germany to cover the Olympics and ended up changing media and television news history forever. Nearly, <laughs> man, it's unbelievable. Nearly a billion people watched that program. But this movie is incredible. And I can finally, finally talk about it. It's called September 5. It's produced by Sean Penn. Um, it has all those amazing actors I listed. Directed by Tim Fellbaum. Incredible German director. Written by our good friend Moritz. And I had the pleasure of being on set. Got to do some incredible uh, off-screen acting directly with Peter Sarsgaard. Which I will just cherish and drink in my <laughs> my dreams until the day that I turn to ashes. You know, I talked recently about falling back in love with Garden State. Peter Sarsgaard's incredible in that. And he's on a brand new Apple TV Plus drama called presumed innocent which when we were on set together he gave me all the juicy goss about which i didn't expect uh which i won't say here because i think you should watch it for yourself but incredible opportunity for him to work alongside his brother-in-law one of again one of my all-time favorite actors jake gyllenhaal that's right they are brothers-in-law for many many years now peter is married to maggie gyllenhaal jake's sister uh, but what this does mean is that very soon oh yeah sorry i wanted to mention this film has been f officially announced to premiere at one of the most prestigious european film festivals uh pre and also just to be like completely blunt, one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world, at least what what I'm aware of in the Western world, like an incredible, incredible, incredible uh, opportunity here. Amazing movie. It's it's one of just two of like the big debut premieres of Venice Film Festival. And I think this means a lot of big changes for Moritz, a lot of big Hollywood red carpets. And um, I'm very, very proud of him. And I'm lucky to have uh, experienced that world firsthand. And... Um, what this means is that I can finally, when it's the right time, when the film has, because this is what I'm allowed to say. Now this is like public knowledge. The film exists. These are the actors. That's the producer. That's the director. That's the writer. It's going to be at Venice. These are all public things, which I'm allowed to say. When the film premieres, so when the film in a few months is finally out, this means now I can finally have Moritz here on the podcast. And hopefully if this works officially on video. And I can give him his big, juicy, sweet surprise, which I am so proud of myself for not having slipped it or cracked it or leaked it to a single soul. And it's genuinely going to blow him away. So I'm very happy for that. And I'm very excited to do that. And it means that finally that's uh, going to happen sooner than later. Now it was uh, genuinely like seeming impossible to me for the longest time. And now it's possible. So with all of that, out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about five more German cliches. There are on this list 25, bing, there are 25, but I'm going to do six through 10 because the video that I made was one through five. Now we're going to do six through 10 and we can save the rest for a, for a rainy day. Okay. So um, I'm almost spoiling these here, but let's get right into the top here. Germans are punctual. The clock dictates the rhythm of life in Germany to the minute. 
buses leave at 2.13 p.m. or 5.18 p.m., for example. If it becomes 2.15 or 5.20 p.m. or even a few minutes later, the first people waiting at the bus stop get nervous. That's true, I've seen that before. If the bus is late, this can be a problem for many Germans. They might be late for an appointment. This is considered very rude. Germans also like to complain about the punctuality of trains. In their statistics, trains that arrive up to 5 minutes and 59 seconds later than the timetable says they are also considered punctual. That's very interesting to me. Let me move this uh, little camera guy over here. Uh, for me, that's super interesting because it's extremely true. I mean, of course, you know, I think it all, it, it, it's a generational thing. It also depends on generations because there's always going to be people who just don't care. Like the more people that you just have sitting around with like a phone or a book or they're on a call, you know, I think some people also like running up to the uh, bus stop are pretty happy if it's a couple of minutes late. But as someone who for, let's say, uh, so for my first cafe job for Malefits, that was one year, just just shy of one year. And for my uh, job at the middle school here in Munich, uh, which was uh, two full years. Uh, so like, you know, about three years total of like really, you know, depending on public transportation to get to my job before I was able to drive here. This really is like, it's so punctual. I think I had a, a bus that left from my old apartment, uh, which took me directly to my school job, which was pretty lucky. But it left at like, um, I think it was... Uh, sick. No, no, I'm wrong. I took a bus. I took a bus right by my house to my gym because I was a healthy boy back in the day. <laughs> uh, I, I took a, <laughs> a bus to my gym. And then uh, after I did the gym, I took the, uh, the underground station. I took the U-Bahn to the, to the school, something like that. I think I took a train and then another bus, whatever. Anyway, the point was I had it planned out every single day, exactly the same. If I got up at like five 30 on the dot and I didn't like slug around, you know, if I got up with the alarm, which I usually did because I didn't want to wake anybody else up. And if I got up and then I got, I would usually like every night before bed, this is how German I actually think I was for a little while there, but like I would put my fresh clothes on a chair in the kitchen like slumped over a chair, I put my, my clean clothes with my gym bag on the kitchen counter, zipped up, ready to go with my water bottle and my running shoes and my shorts and my little locket for the, you know, for the locker. I'd put all that in front, you know, sometimes maybe like a, a phone charger, like whatever I knew I might need for the next day. I'd plump all that like right there on the table, go to bed, 5.30, bing, wake up, go straight to the bathroom, brush, brush my teeth like this. Ugh. Finally, uh, you know, that would wake me up enough where I could like go to the kitchen and I wouldn't have coffee yet. This was a big thing. This was a big thing for me because I, I like treated myself after the gym. I wouldn't have coffee right at the apartment first thing in the morning. Uh, granted, I think I was still uh, in my 20s. So it makes a big difference. Um, I went to the kitchen, um, got dressed in the, in the fresh clothes there, like <laughs> standing like this in the counter in my underwear, put on the clothes, put the bag over, had my other bag with my stuff in it, my computer, whatever I needed books and then uh took this exact bus that left i guess at like six let's say like six twenty four i remember it wasn't on like a zero or a five it was like six twenty four or whatever um or even earlier like six twelve or whatever and then i would like run out grab that bus and that bus would take me to my gym which was like center city get off there go in the gym and i knew exactly when that bus would normally get there which only like variating varying it was only varying off that like by one or two minutes in case like something unexpected happened with traffic get off that bus go to the gym and i knew i had like 55 minutes like to an hour to like do what i needed to do go in do my cardio, do whatever lifting I wanted to do, shower at the gym, which also, I guess I just had to get used to that. Like there's so many guys at these German gyms who like, you know, their locker is like 10 rows back, like an aisle of locker rooms, you know, like in a high school movie from the nineties. And they would get naked there and walk naked. All the way to the shower. <laughs> And then like, hang, not like towel over the shoulder, mind you, like as if it's, you know, like a John Hughes movie or something like just walking, just barefoot. You know, who cares if I get athlete's foot? Who cares if someone had like hand, foot, mouth or like some blisters or like some open pimple juice? Like I'm just doing barefoot in an open locker where people enter this room in their street shoes, not the shower part, the main hallway where anybody can be. I've been caught naked by the female janitors because they also clean the gym at all times of the day and they're just always there. And you're, if you're naked, then you're naked. 
And <laughs> I remember like getting over that fear, walking in the shower, getting naked, showering with complete strangers, one time having an enormously athletic looking, uh, beautiful black man uh, come to me and tell me, guys, I must say, oh man, I am so, uh, I can, okay, okay, okay. I've been trying to do this right. It is not going right. It's the first time, for, it's the first come, first serve, sort of first waste of time sort of thing. I wasted too much time in the first uh, section of properly uh, working equipment to focus on uh, BS paranoia uh, insecurities. I should have used that time properly to tell these funny stories. Um, anyway, going to the gym, people be naked, and I remember standing there in my little shower cubby, no dividers, uh, blankly pressing a button as a, a beautiful man <laughs> walks up, just like centaur, you know? horse and all it was like hey man that one doesn't work that one's that one's broken and i was like okay thank you please please place all anacondas and hogs on the far side of the fence you know and then they're like this one you know uh anyway and then you know leaving the uh, getting out of the gym everything was timed getting out going back to the street and then I would get my coffee, and then I would get my coffee, and then I would get my coffee. And usually with um, a pretzel, so everything just um, balanced out and stayed even. Uh, and then I would get on my bus and put in the old headphones and listen to old episodes of Radio Lab before the host got canceled for improper behavior in the workplace. And then I would go to my school job and I would be there perfectly on time. So if we're just playing the game of is this an accurate cliche well by golly in my experience it sure as hell is then let's go back to okay 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 so we can zoom out a little bit here come on now you dirty dog come on now you dirty dog come on now come on now you dirty dog come on now come on there we go okay Bear with me, people. Okay, Germans wear traditional clothing. Dindel and Lederhosen are really popular among some people in Germany. They wear them on traditional dates, in the Trachtenverein, and sometimes on festivals. A Dindel at a wedding in Bavaria or at a folk festival is normal. True. At most restaurants <laughs> in uh, Bavaria, you'll see someone wearing that. Uh, but a look around German pedestrian zones shows what most Germans wear everyday life. Jeans and a shirt just like everywhere else. Totally true. Not even like a big opinion on this, not even a big story here. Um, but if you are someone coming into the realm of Germany for the very, 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 very first time, and you think that everyone at all times is dressed like that, this is a good point to remind yourself that you're wrong. <laughs> Sounds like Obama. This is a good time to remind yourself that you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, everyone kind of looks like this guy right here and um but but if you go to you know first off that's only happening in bavaria and you'll see it at you know special occasions people born and raised here that's their special thing you know it's just it's just their thing you know like someone might i don't what's a good what's a good equivalent i'm thinking of like southern people who wear like camouflage tuxedos or something but that's not considered the norm and a lot of Southern people would be like, Jesus, man, spring for a normal soup. It's like, it's the kind of traditional clothing that you're wearing, right? So uh, most beer gardens, uh, traditional Bavarian restaurants, businesses of operation which celebrate the culture will usually require people to wear the clothing as a uniform. And yes, people who are connected to and who are, how would you say it? People who are like passionate about uh, their culture will wear these traditional things to weddings or christenings, um, uh, birth, you know, important birthdays, people's 50th, 60th birthdays, things like that. So yes, uh, happens, but not, uh, extremely, not, not, op not common basically anywhere, uh, except for Bavaria and only in special occasions. Usually Germans let their hair grow under their arms. Bleh. Not true. Some people do because it's like the like the trend of the time. Some people do, but not because they're in Germany. 
some people do, but not because they're in Germany. The same reason why some people do when they live in literally anywhere else in the Western world or anywhere else. I don't know. They do it anywhere. Hardly any, uh, oh no, no, I covered it up here. I was going to do the next one. Uh, in this song, blah, 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 loof balloons, armpit hairs, no longer true, da, da, da. 71% of women shave their armpits compared to 43% of men. I don't know exactly when this, um, article came out. I should have probably taken a little gander at that. I think it's a little older. Let's see if it says at the bottom somewhere. Say it? No. Uh, well, if it does, I can't find it and I don't want to waste the time. I've wasted enough time, but no. I, except for when it's just like a type of person, just like a... Of like, you know, it's, it's like a stereotypical, like, oh, I'm a vegan, keto, yoga, holistic, you know, it's just like, sometimes it's just your thing. Some people just don't like to, but they still smell nice. It's not like, it doesn't like necessarily, it's not the same as the stereotypes you might have believed Europeans uh, to be, you know, as late as, you know, as recent as like 10 years ago. It's just not true. Germans wear socks in sandals. One! 100% true. Uh, hardly any clothing combination is considered as German as socks and sandals. The Germans themselves know this. They themselves always cite socks and sandals as an example of when it comes to bad taste in Germany. On the street in the summer, you really see people wearing the combination. And in a survey, 10% said it's okay to wear it like that on vacation. 10% <sighs> of very cool people. Uh, for a few years now, a special version of the shoes from Germany has been popular in other countries as well. Fashion fans in Milan and Copenhagen love the wide Birkenstock, sand Birkenstock sandals from Neustadt in Rheinland -Pal -Pal Palatinate, but they don't wear socks with them. I beg uh, to differ. Okay. Um, that's, uh, oh, we have one more, right? Six through 10. Yeah, yeah. That happens a lot. I see it all the time. I've been, I've, I've been guilty of doing it myself. I've been guilty of doing it. I should do this better. I've been guilty of doing it myself. Germans love their cars. Depends. Every second German has his, every second German has his or her own car. It feels that way now. There's a ton of cars on the streets, despite how much public transportation they have. Germans, Ger the Germans favorite child. Is it saying? Most uh, get really emotional when it comes to an engine and four tires. I, I mean, I feel like this is written for a different generation. Like, I don't, I like driving my car, but I'm American. I know people that drive their car because they have kids or because they needed one for one reason or another. But the, uh, the auto industry is the largest, you know, it is the largest industry in Germany. You got the BMWs, you got the Mercedes, you got the Volkswagen, you know, and more. Uh, big, big industry here. So I get that people love it, but I mean, this feels like any, like this feels like just like anybody, right? Like Germany loves their car. Hey, pff, queen wrote a song. I love my car. You know, go talk to literally any American guy from the 1970s. Look at a movie like dazed and confused. You're not going to find a guy who doesn't love their car. Uh, da, da, da. And in cities, fewer and fewer people have their own car. 18% of people have a pet name for their car. I had pet names for cars, but I'm American. Uh, anyway, it's a practical everyday object. Yes. I mean, it depends how much money you have. It depends where you're living. Um, if you live in like villages or small towns, the same as anywhere else, you're going to need a car to get around, right? Not going to be a bus from every small town, every small little crooked, little crooked nanny to get around everywhere you need to go. You're going to have to get around like, you know, you can take a car to a major station, but maybe it's like, you know, 30, 40 minutes away by the interstate. Depends where you live. Uh, major cities, most people that I know might have one car, but a lot of them don't because you can just take a train. Uh, and that's why it's so convenient. Uh, guys, I am going to wrap it, up wrap it up here. I really hope this worked out. The audio might be weird. The video might be weird, but this is just a, a little test episode. So I hope you had fun. Uh, again, as usual, if you had any fun or you liked it uh, at all, please make sure to... Um, Wherever you found this, if it's YouTube or uh, on streaming anywhere, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, make sure to follow, uh, give a like, share it, you know, the whole deal, but it really helps out a lot. Thank you guys. I love you so much and bye. Bye.